This song is about the Chankuluta, the red robe. And the words to this uh, song is a very simple song, you know. I heard this song and it really, really uh, interests me, you know, because uh, how they put the words in, you know. And uh, when we walk the red road, you know, some of us think the red road is hard, very hard. But it all depends how you make your red road, whether it's you make it wide or narrow, you know. But to me, I walk the red road, and it's a good red road. I love the red road, you know. It, make, it changed me, and it brings me many good things in life. So, when I hear this song, you know, this song, it, it really interests me, you know. And uh, I always uh, give Wopila, like every day, every evening, and prayers. But anyway, this uh, uh, words to this uh, song is, I'm walking on the red road. Grandfather, I thank you. I pray to you with this Chanupa. Grandfather, Grandfather, thank you. And those words, you know, those words itself, it really... Like it put it put a a spiritual awakening in those words like that. Chanupakilei, 
Welcome, everyone. Um, my, my name is um, Steve Dickison, and I'm um, really honored today. Um, we're honored by the presence of David Swallow Jr., who will be with us and has agreed to be with us and talk with us today from the um, Pine Ridge Reservation, his home. And um, I want to thank the various people who have helped us. But first, as we've been learning to do in these in these recent years, um, and and when I think, um, you know, how did how did this start? I think it really was the the um, the strength that we saw displayed by so many people at Standing Rock that brought forward the situation of us U.S. Americans. Um, and indigenous peoples of this of this place. And so I need to say, and I want to say that the campuses of San Francisco State University are located within the occupied territories of the Ramatush Ohlone and the Federated Indians of Graton Rancheria. Um, those are the coastal Miwok and Southern Pomo. I want to thank um, Joanne Barker, who is chair of American Indian Studies at um, San Francisco for clarifying that for me. And, um, and I want to um, thank American Indian Studies for, for helping us co-present today's event. And so I welcome their students and teachers here as well. Um, I am going to introduce my friend, our friend, Hafez Modirzadeh, who will introduce David Swallow Jr. And I'm going to, we agreed before this started that we were going to begin with questions from the audience. And so if you look in the bottom of your question and answer, um, there's a Q&A um, button down at the bottom. So please use that for your questions and answers. And then Hafez and I will be able to field them and revoice them. And, um, but that's the way we'll begin. But I've been wondering about the land acknowledgement and, um, you know, this practice that has cropped up across, mainly across academic zones in, in, in the past five, six years. And, um, and what are we, saying when we invoke that language or what are we intending? What are we meaning? And 
I, I need to tell a little personal story. Last um, spring, I drove um, across the US to um, my family's home in Minnesota. And when I left, um, we were going to attend a memorial for my father who had died from COVID in November. And so in May, we could have some kind of public gathering after vaccinations had come. And, and we were allowed to, to, to gather together. And so I, on my trip, I decided I'm going to go places I've never been. I wanted to drive the car. And, and, and one of those places was the Pine Ridge Reservation. And, and I wanted to um, just pay my respects, especially at Wounded Knee, this place that has been in our public awareness for so long as a place of, of, of sacrifice and massacre and, and, and memorialization. And so I phoned up Hafez and I said, tomorrow I'm going to be on Pine Ridge, um, you know, just to let you know. And, and he said, um, bring some tobacco, you know, and scatter some tobacco at, at, on the graves at Wounded Knee um, in honor of your father and, and the others there. And so this is what I did. And I was there by myself and, I spent about an hour and I saw that this is a contemporary grave site as well as an historic one. Um, several of the local people were, were present in the parking area and, and so forth, but I, I mainly was by myself. And then I drove north up through Porcupine a bit. And then I, and then I crossed out of the um, reservation land um, to the Redbud Reservation, but before I reached Pine Ridge and after I left, the whole time I was listening on the car radio to um, local native station coming out of Rapid City. And they were talking about land restoration. There was a symposium that had taken place in Rapid City a year or two before this. And so there were many different people from the, from the young activist people speaking to, um, Native lawyers, um, historians, people that were working with parks lands within um, within Rapid City itself and within um, certain buildings, trying to get um, Native centers set up in Rapid City and so forth. But but the whole emphasis of, about it was was a, a conviction that the land needs to come back. You know that if this land is going to be held incessantly and made available to corporations constantly and to the rights of those who were not of that land, then we're, we're all in danger, you know? So, so I think that this is what that land acknowledgement leads us to is, is the contemplation, the deep contemplation of what it would mean for all of us. If, if we started to restore the land that was even the lands that were guaranteed by treaty, you know, all the treaties have been broken. So I'm going to leave it with that, but I want to thank Hafez. I want to thank David. I want to thank Michelle for helping David today. And um, we'll have to turn on David's microphone at some point. But um, I want to thank Chris Jones for his help in the background. And, and thank you all for being here. Um, I'll turn it over now to Hafez Modirzadeh. Thank you, Steve. My name is Hafez Modirzadeh. I teach music here at San Francisco State University. And um, after many, many years, even decades in, inside this uh, university system, today is, uh, is the most honorable day for me. Very, very uh, special um, opportunity to, to share my gratitude. Um, so I, uh, to the person I'm about to introduce, so I very quickly want to say um, uh, thank you to, uh, um, to Steve and the Poetry Center and everyone who works there for arranging this and making it work as well as American Indian Studies for, for, for co-hosting. And my dear friend, Chris Jones, for showing up and giving more support and support all together on this journey. Um, I am, uh, uh, I'm very happy today. Today's a really beautiful day uh, to be um, introducing a, a good friend, um, a great teacher, teacher of teachers, teachers of all of us here. And that's David Swallow Jr. Uh, he is a Tito Lakota spiritual leader from Pine Ridge, Reservation, also known as Camp Number Three Three Four in South Dakota, 
He's a headsman of Lakota, Dakota, and Lakota Nation from the band of Crazy Horse. The Sundance Chief, he's a veteran AIM, that's American Indian Movement member and activist. He's a keeper of traditional ceremonial ways of his people. And he's married to Nyla Helper, who is medicine woman of the Hong Papa band uh, and uh, a very important person, uh, holy person uh, among her people. Uh, I believe the great granddaughter of Samuel Helper, uh, survivor of the Wounded Knee Massacre of 1890. Davis Hall Jr. has been at the 1973 um, Wounded Knee uh, period. And there's so much uh, to, to learn from this man has helped me very much over the last couple of years. And so uh, I'd like to introduce you by your Lakota spiritual name, Wawita Yuhamani. Thank you for coming. Oh, you have to unmute. Okay. Can you hear me? Not yet. This all the way on. Okay. Here. Okay. We like to uh, open it up um, to, uh, to to wherever David likes to take it, and also to uh, to anyone um, out there. And welcome for coming. And um, any, any questions? to get things rolling. Okay, you hear me though, huh? Yeah. That's as loud as I can Okay, hear. all right, that's good, that's real good. Mm -hmm. So how do you wanna start with this? Yeah. Um, uh, Steve, uh, I don't know how to uh, see any questions or even- um, get Anybody an has questions. Anyone's come. Regarding to the indigenous nation. Oh, whatever you want to. Well, you know, uh, you, you were speaking yesterday, David, about um, Washington, you know, things are always going on over there. And ha have you just returned from there? Because uh, they rescheduled it. They rescheduled it. Yeah. yeah. In um, order for us to go over there, they rescheduled it again. So hopefully by May, we should be over there again. You okay. Know? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the uh, the reason why we were trying to go to Washington is to meet with the, the War Department, the Interior, you know, because they're the ones that we signed treaty with, you know, which the President of the United States, Ulysses S. Grant, approve of it, <laughs> see? So we need to go over there and uh, we need to correct some things and our treaty territory. So that's what frightening a lot of people, a lot of the politicians. See that there's a treaty territory down the Ocheti Shakoi land. See? First, the Ocheti Shakoi land starts from North Texas, cross Canada to the end of Canada. <laughs> that's how it starts. <laughs> See? And the treaty territory that Ulysses S. Grant approved of it is the parts of Nebraska, Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, see? And the land, landmarks are the rivers that are there, you know? So those are the things that we have to make them now. The only reason uh, we're on the reservation is they're waiting for us to, you know, uh, build our cabinet and take care of our own affairs. That's why they put these reservations. Uh, reservations are not state or not, not a nation. It's just a holding place like the, um, you know, uh, by the border, America make holding place for the illegal immigrants, as they call them. <laughs> and uh, they put, so reservations are not, <laughs> it's the same too, <laughs> see? So uh, some of us are not proud to be on the reservation out here in our own land, you know? That's, uh, so, so we're gonna go in May and uh, start now we could speak the words, understand the words, you know, 
of everything, of their language and their government. So now, you know, we have to deal with them to, okay, we could take our own affairs, you know, now take this, uh, because now uh, they have a thing called a tribal council, but that's not the real tribal council. That is a 1934 Howard Wheeler Act passed by the uh, Senate to put it there, you know, because the Wheelers are always uh, merchants, you know, they're Englishmen merchants and uh, they've been around and, you know, uh, and one of the Wheelers uh, married an Indian woman. That's why they have to be involved. And uh, that's why they brought this uh, 1934 act, which called it today the tribal council, which that's not the tribal council, you know. They, mm -hmm. There's no tribal council by treaty, you know, not yet. So that's what we're trying to form and uh, we are going to, and we're gonna put it together and get our nation up. But, but see what America did is, uh, the federal government did is uh, he didn't inform the American citizens everything <laughs> and start selling our treaty territory land, see, without us, you know, giving them consent, see. Uh, so they came in and they uh, built homes and uh, uh, many things, roads and, uh, you know, stores and mindings and cutting the timbers and all this a whole bunch of things. So now uh, Lakota Ocheti Shakoi needs to take control because Ocheti Shakoi is a government way before America, Britain, England, you know, way, way before it was running right here. And now that we learn to use and learn how to push the pencil and the computer and everything, we're putting the declaration together of the Lakota Nation, see? So that's one of, in order for me and few other ones, we do that, we have to relinquish our US citizenships, <laughs> see? So that's a good reason, because anyway, uh, they gave me a citizenship without me. Uh, I'm, I was kind of forced to be an American, you know, <laughs> which I don't want to, I, I'm, I'm, believe me, America's good, you know, it's nice and good, but I don't want to be an American, you know, I want to be a uh, Tito Lakota of the Ocheti Shakoi citizen nation, <laughs> see, that's what I want to be, you know, so that's why we, a lot of us uh, relinquish. Mm -hmm our citizenship, and we even gave the name back and uh, everything back, everything, you know, back to the, and we're gonna be registered with Malakota language walks with pride. Say, mm -hmm. what we done, you have money. And what is what we done, you have money, that name came from the Eagle clan, see? Once you see an Eagle, it did something to your mind, your eyes and your heart, wow. You know, and the eagle is a proud flyer, see? So that's why, you know, that uh, they gave me that name when I was a young man from the clan, eagle clan and carry it all you know, into the red tail hawk clan, you know? See? So we are with the, uh, the Tioshpe of uh, Kashunka with Go Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse never signed no treaty. So I said in the book, they don't believe in it. Really, it is a long story if you want to ever go through that, you know, the whole process of this, how this treaty began. You know, one time I asked one of the professors, I said, you know, when Great Britain and the United States signed a treaty, huh, did every American sign it? Mm. He said, no, <laughs> only, only the higher up. Well, okay, that 1868 treaty, you made every Indian, mostly the Indians sign it by themselves. So that's now and void, 1868, you know? So there are people here who are uh, asking about that reference I made to camp number 334. And I yeah, think that's, that's a camp number. Team. Yeah. 344, four, rose by the 355, this reservation, to put it like that as a mm -hmm. uh, modern day uh, camp number, you mm -hmm. know? So uh, if you go to the reservation, you don't see all the nice things that you see outside of the reservation, in the reservation, you can't, because it's, it's not a state mm -hmm. or it's not a nation, it's a reservation, you know? 
Uh, look up the word reservation. Tell me what it means. <laughs> See, it's not a it's not a home for nothing, man. Nothing, you know. So, yeah, go ahead with your question. So, so David, there are a couple of questions coming up here. You can probably fold them in together. One is uh, this overarching question about uh, uh, the land restoration to to the original people still being achievable. I personally believe so, and that's why you know, the mission continues and this is what you're talking about. But there's this general question, how to achieve it, the action in which to be able to restore the land back to the people. And um, this is uh, also, I guess it's all related, but um, related to also your um, taking on that white man's name of David Swallow Jr. and, 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 and how you're able to, 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 uh, uh, live with that name and your, your, your own Lakota name? Okay, the first question, land risk, uh, the land, about the land is, the land has always belonged to the indigenous people, you know? And back then, uh, we've all indigenous people, the only laws we follow is the laws of uh, um, the creator, see? The written laws up in the universe. That's the only one we followed, you know. So uh, we don't have this uh, anger spirit in us. Mm. See, anger. All indigenous people, you know, they don't have anger. They just follow the rules of the creator. See, mm. that's what they do. So in those days, uh, if we have the anger, then we will punish those who come on the boat of our shores. See? But instead, we took them in, we fed them, we nourished them back to health. And we don't know that many of my ancestors have this, they don't know this people that arrive on our shores have a greed, greedy, greed thought in their head. See, they didn't know that. Uh -huh. And that's why, so the land is always ours, but the trouble we have here among the indigenous people is we are uh, sent to the, um, uh, the schools, you know, to learn their way, their way, not our way, their way, to stay under their control. See? <laughs> or else you're not qualified, right? Uh -huh. See? So therefore, many of my people that, let, let's say, they're so educated in, in the Western ways, you know, they're educated in that way, but they're not educated in our way and they cannot see our way is the legal terms of anything, see? So now uh, that land is always ours, but they don't want us, let us know so they could make profit out of it, these corporations and American corporations and overseas corporations that come here, you know, see? So that is why they formed a reservation to keep us in there, see? So the land is always ours. We have to come together, build a Lakota or whatever the indigenous nation cabinet. You have to build a cabinet and enforce uh, put put the la, grant the indigenous uh, language in there, how it's going to run, and take it from the roots of your grand uh, grandparents, the ancestor roots, and put it on a piece of paper. Because when you sit down at the round table, you want to have that. See, mm -hmm. this is the way before you came, and the land is still ours. See, see. Yes. Uh so David, you know, here at San Francisco State, there's a long-standing history uh, that, that uh, um, built uh, the College of Ethnic Studies through the uh, Third World Liberation Front, student strikes. There was the occupation of Alcatraz. And there are people who came through here who, who are friends of yours. And um, uh, there's a, what you're talking about, it seems that people like myself are coming to realize this and, and want to do something, want to do something as non-Lakota people want to uh, help activate uh, the, 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 these, uh, this uh, justice that, that's, that's uh, required. And so uh, there's some folks out here who would like to, to hear from you about uh, that uh, 
reoccupation of a wounded knee that you were there, that you were there with, and that and that period of time because that inspires us to um, to to continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but uh, and the first second question is uh, how I live with David Swallow. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's oh. right. Yeah. yeah, how I live with David Swallow is uh, well, I was raised with that name. See. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I didn't even know. First time I went to school, I didn't even know my name was David Swallow. You know, they called me Lakota Hoxila, Indian boy, Lakota Hoxila, as growing up, my grandparents, you know. So when they went to school and they said, uh, they put David Swallow on a piece of cardboard with a little string and hang it on my chest. <laughs> as, when I went home, I said, Grandpa, look, the school gave me this name. I didn't know about uh, being baptized, or I didn't know the hospital, or my mom gave that to me, so I was raised by my grandparents. See? Mm -hmm. I didn't know about that. <laughs> so I thought the school gave me that name, you know, David Swallow. And I was, I didn't know any better, you know, so I was so proud of it, you know, and later on I, I caught on in life, you know, but uh, I, I would still like David Swallow and all that, you know, uh, because I grew up with that name, but uh, in order for the indigenous nations to uh, the Lakota to, you know, re not reestablish, uh, awaken our nation is, I have to do this because the senators told me and uh, uh, governors told me that as long as I have a social security, I'm under the jurisdiction of the United States of America and have nothing to do with the treaty, okay? So if you relinquish your citizenship, then you go back to your original, where you're from. And that is why many of us did that. So now, you, you know, what we tell you how many is me, and I'm a citizen of the Lakota Dakota nation of Rocheti Shakomi. See? So I wanted to feel that as an original people that I could stand here and I could talk to these people, I could talk about the treaty, see? And those treaties are, are one of the 1868 treaty is a nam and void drunken treaty of the Long Meadow. See? Because at that time, all this, uh, anybody signs it and they gave them whiskey. <laughs> America did that, government did that. See, they got drunk. And the 1851 treaty is only the sacred bottle keepers and that crazy horse sitting bull, all these chiefs the higher ups signed it. And at the end of that, after this being signed, no more, you know, re-signing, no more treaties will be made, they said. But we talk about corporation way back then, the corporation, the uh, gold mining companies and greed people that have discovered gold in the Black Hills and they, they uh, uh, did the 1868. And they made a chief too. They made, Red Cloud is not a chief. He's a war general. He was sent to Washington to represent the Lakotas because he's a war general. He burned up the, the trails and the forts and all that with his warriors. He's real good at, you know. Mm -hmm. But when I went over there, they bribed him and everything, you know. You know how politicians are. I don't know if you do, but I know the politicians. <laughs> and when he came back, he told the people, he said, the white father made me chief over all of you. <laughs> but see that president don't have nothing to do with us at all, mm -hmm. at all. We are Lakotas. And that's where the thin line of separation, a red cloud sitting bull, you know, red cloud and a spotted tail, you know, However, Spotted Tail is a chief, but not Red Cloud. See? And that's the way they get, you know, <laughs> they get around everything. See? Not till today, we know that. We know that. That's why you're going to see they decorate his name and schools and everything down here, you know. And all of a sudden, America's favorite general was a, a dirty, rotten general, Custer. <laughs> That's America's favorite general. West Point Academy graduate everything, you know. Yeah. 
Then they turn around and he lost the battle with the finest man he had. And all of a sudden, you know, they found up till today, uh, <laughs> they're looking for all excuses, every excuse, because that battle only lasts half an hour. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's all. And uh, up to every war, even World War I, World War II, you know, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for the Native American code talkers, the United States, it's a, uh, I put it as a spiritual, or not spiritual, historical fact, if it wasn't for the Native American code talkers, the United States would have lost that war. But they used the Native American code talkers and they didn't want to award them right away. They don't. Now, 90 years old, 80 years old, some of them are dead afterwards. They recognize them. It's too late. <laughs> too late, you know. So that's how it is. And uh, I live with this name, and I, uh, I'm used to, you know. I'm, I'm really used to living with this name. I don't care, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I could all, in the Lakota ways, as we grow, our names change to our great deeds that we may do. Yellow. Know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I'm going to um, ask a question from an anonymous person here in the audience. I wanted to ask Steve if there's a way to see everybody. Uh, it's, it's nice if, if, if we had people who want to get, you know, on, on camera at least, because I'm only seeing a handful of us here. Is there a way to see everybody so we can, uh, we can't. You're on mute. Okay. And, and the third question you have is about, about the American Indian movement. Right. Uh, First time about the American Indian movement great, do a great, really great for the all indigenous people here on this United States, you know. Mm. It's a civil rights, it's about civil rights. It's not about uh, uh, going around and raising king, no, it's about civil rights, recognize the indigenous people's rights, you know. Mm. And they're the link to that and um, they want, government to recognize their own laws, see? Because government written a lot of laws against the Native Americans, you know? They did, and uh, they overlooked it. Only when they want to punish the Native American, they do it in a blink of an eye, mm. see? And uh, like they hanged the 38 Dakota warriors in Maquero, see? Mm. They hanged the 38, yeah, so it's the senators and out there, you know? And the senator, below the senators are the ranchers and the farmers and be, all those. And then there's the prospectors and all of them. They're the ones, you know. Mm -hmm. So AIM came, when AIM came, American Indian movement came, they opened the doors to a lot of things, you know, mm -hmm. to be proud of our culture. Because in those schools, they said, the Lakota ways of worshiping is the devil worshiping. It's evil and black magic, <laughs> see? But when AIM came and it was limited. And back in those days, when they caught you as a spiritual leader, they put you away without court. <laughs> you know, and some died in there. America don't know that. You know, they don't know. Some died in that prison. They still, you know, mm. but we still continue to practice and AIM brought that, you know, so AIM uh, gave us a full support of everything, you know, everything, all indigenous people, American Indian movement, see. And it's the last one here and my uh, condolences to the last leader that made his journey, mm. Vernon Belcourt, you know, about a week or two ago, you know, mm. see. They, they did real good for all indigenous nations on this planet here, you know, on this here, you know. And uh, uh, I was, I was a, a young kid at that time, probably 17, 18 years old, you know. And uh, I helped them guard. I was a security and the guards and people like Fool Scroll, Frank Fool Scroll. Matthew King, the noble red man, and many other medicine men, you know, like Wallace Blackout, Leonard Crowdog, Charlie Mexican, 
Joe Thunderhawk. These are the uh, uh, spiritual leaders in those days that helped to guide. So AIM, does, AIM was guided by the, the sacredness of the, uh, the spirit. When they're gonna do something, they ask the elders and the elders ask the spiritual leaders and the spiritual leaders, uh, spiritual men, they do the ceremony and follow that, see? Mm -hmm. So they don't go around uh, breaking stores and uh, looting. Right. They don't. And we cannot loot because every indigenous people here, we have a pride of who we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, uh, there's a guest here, if I pronounce it incorrectly, is uh, Ashi Jirua says, how are you doing, David? Someone who, who knows oh, you. Good. Well, I'm doing good. I'm doing, okay. staying healthy. I'm trying to stay on top of the world. <laughs> Speaking of the world, uh, we have a couple of questions here that, again, I fold into one. As someone myself, you know, uh, whose father came as an immigrant, you know, as someone of mixed blood, and a lot of our students, a lot of us have mixed heritages, you know, and, and, and coming here to this specific question is asked, what advice do you have for the young generation who these days are more informed and aware of the unjust policies of the United States, what can they do to move in a good direction in spite of the government's mistakes? What can you tell the young people today who are, who are seeking uh, the, this direction through your history and your people and your root? Oh, good questions. I like that because uh, uh, all the mixed bloods, you know, follow your heart first. Mm. Follow your heart. What little... Which, which blood do you want to follow? Follow that with your heart, you know? And then go through the roots and find yourself, see? And if you have a hard time, then you go on to the, uh, wherever indigenous nation, you, spiritual ways you believe, go over there and follow the product, protocols of that nation and uh, they will help you to balance and seek and everything like that. See, that's first about yourself. You know, you could do that. See, mm -hmm. it don't matter. I believe all blood is red. <laughs> See, it is. See, so you could do that, you know. And if they want to help to do something, then uh, well, in the 60s, there's a lot of protests going on, you know. And still America is the same thing, polluting the water, air, the ground, I'm building more nuclear bombs, and what if one of those went off by itself, huh? We'll be in trouble, you know? See? And uh, uh, get this, do something about these corporations. Corporations are run by a team of greedy people that don't care. See? Uh -huh. <laughs> they don't have care about any, uh, that endangered plant. They don't <laughs> they drill everything for Mother Earth. They want to kill her. They're making her sick, you know. They're making her sick. So uh, young people, if they want to do something, uh, regardless of what degrees of blood they have or where they're from, you know, I've already explained that. So uh, get together. Uh, you have a brilliant mind, you know and use that, maybe let's try and help clean this, at least the United States, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's try and help clean the waters first so the fish could be. Let's try to help clean and let's try to tell somehow to get across these corporations to stop uh, digging for uranium and whatever it is that, you know, so maybe we could breathe kind of fresh air in a good air, see? Good air and uh, maybe practicing to care for one another too, mm -hmm. truly. See? And practice not to lie too. Uh, practice not to have the greed, see? And uh, practice these good habits, see? And uh, maybe there'll be a way to, you know, just the healing will start. See, mm -hmm. the healing to begin, because uh, 
it really needed. That's how it was in the beginning, you know. In the beginning, there was harmony and peace among each other. And of course, yeah, there's a little dispute, but they don't just fight any old way. There's a, there's a government right there. So the government were the Western people think these are savage, these are uneducated. So no, we're not an uneducated. We follow the stars. We follow the universe, you know? And we know where life begins and we know where we're heading, see? And today it's really hard because uh, we have forgotten the original instructions that was given to us from up there, <laughs> see? Yes, it, it does seem like um... More and more, the younger generation, this generation, is uh, uh, losing all confidence in these governments. You know, these these the way that the watching as things unfold all over the world, and 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 turning to indigenous understanding of the sacredness of this Mother Earth and 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 the interconnectivity, the 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 relatedness that we all have together with it, and so seeking from from. Um, uh, you know, spiritual leaders like yourself, you know, uh, uh, ways to um, to uh, feel, not feel separated, you know, like when we, we listen to you talk about um, being Lakota and and uh, even, even on, on this campus, you know, how departments are separate, you know, separated up and divided up, but you bring a philosophy of, of uh, all my relations that helps us to feel uh, even if we are of mixed blood, there's there's a place for us in your heart. <clears throat> first of all, yeah. Yeah. first of all, as you cannot create or uh, any of these, but uh, the creation of the, you cannot condemn the creation of the creator. <laughs> you do that, then you condemn everything in this life through the universe. You don't like yourself. You hate yourself. See? You just sit down and give it up. Then there you go. You just condemn the beautiful creation that has been made by the creator and sent here. You have condemned that. <laughs> See? Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the word we said is mitakuye ayast. Metakuye mm -hmm. it's only two words that cover the whole world, everything that's in it, and throughout the universe up there too. Around the sun and around all the, the sister planets. See? <laughs> all of them. Mm -hmm. See? So that's where it is. Uh, two, only two words. Metakuye All That covers everything. <laughs> that's it. So we have that in our mind, in our spirit, in our body, then we will have the real harmony everybody talking about. It's not written in any book. It's gonna be written in your mind, your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, the computer you have in here, <laughs> see? it's gonna be written in there, <laughs> see? So it means that we're all related. I'm related to this land. I'm related to the water, to the stone. All four-legged things that crawl. All two-legged men and women. And the air and the fly, things that fly. The trees, the plants, the medicine that grows. Everything. Because when my time is come, to travel again, I will leave this earth robe. The flesh is the earth robe. Remember that. I will leave this to fertilize Mother Earth. It's hers. It's not mine. It's hers. And then she will gladly accept that and use it to fertilize this beautiful place again. See? So Mitakwe asked me, it's, it's, it's a big, two-letter word that covers everything, <laughs> everything. No. Yes. All my relations. So that's why when we have our ceremonies then we all say Mitakwe yes. And it, even uh, <laughs> when you're gonna spray that bug, why do you wanna kill that bug? Mm -hmm. 
There's a purpose for that one was sent by the creator to live on this, just like you too. Mm -hmm. You get a gun and shoot that guy because of the color of skin. Why? Why do you want to do that? See? <laughs> Metaphio asked me, see this here, Mother Earth here was a heaven. It's a paradise. See? It's a paradise. It's a heaven. And she is beautiful. See? It's not a, a world for the economic and politics and all this. See? It's not. It was here so we could feel good and we could feel safe and we could stay the limited time that it was given to us see, to go on. See, see when, you, when, when you put it that way, uh, so, so, some young people uh, asking here, some students, uh, feeling like this, pianet, this planet is beyond repair, you know, and they have a dark foreboding uh, you know, feeling about it, but the way you put it, and I remember you told me once about, you know, there'll always be people, but the spiritual ones uh, will 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 come through. Um, I remember that that was something that helped me to feel positive and good about the future. We looked at it. Maybe they are right in some ways, some degrees, that you feel is far beyond repair. Okay, far beyond the fact, but don't let that bother you. You do because you cannot live forever. So you have to do your part. Your part. Just pay attention to your part, what you got to do, finish that and go on a journey. See? And when it's far, far beyond, then the spirit, your mother, will reheal itself again, which we call it a natural disaster. <laughs> See? Mm. So if she's going to reheal itself, she will. And it's coming. It will happen. But you do your part. You do. As everyone do their part, you know, we might have some little bit of time left our extended time, see? The prophecies of the crazy horse, he said, at the last end of it, he said, he heard the voices of the children cry. Children are screaming and crying for their mom and dad and torturement and everything they're crying from illness, sicknesses, everything they're crying. And it got so much that Crazy Horse helped them cry. <laughs> then it stopped and for a while and all of a sudden that rumbling, he looked up into the sky and he said, they become brighter than day. A huge flash in the sky, he said. And ashes and charcoal fall from the sky and cover the earth. Then the next morning, he said, he see new grass grow and the earth is good again and the water is clear and only God's children are playing down below the valley. <laughs> These are the prophecies of crazy words. See? And we've seen it. And now you are the seventh generation. You are the seventh generation of all race, mixed blood, you said. You are the seventh generation. And it is now you are crying. You're confused. Pretty soon nothing's going to be real to you. Don't feel real. See? Pretty soon you're gonna feel that something inside of yourself is lost, then you must find it, see? Or all of a sudden, if everything's okay, but you're gonna feel sad. Not a sad and lonely, not because your relative made a transformation, but there's something else inside of you, see? 
and now we have the COVID here, you know, and we heard the voices of the children cry. At the border, we heard the voices of the children cry. Mm -hmm. Human trafficking, we heard the voices of the children cry. See? So she will, she will, you know. And if you're in the spiritual ways, you find yourself, you, if, you be, if you become one, your body, your mind, your spirit, you become one, you will have no fear for no transformation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you're separate, then you're going to have a lot of fear, a lot of excuses. But it don't matter what kind of fear excuses you have. You could put down anything you want to, but when it happens, it will happen. See, this COVID is not an act of God. It's an act of men. Mm -hmm. See, a man that have bad intentions for the human being. See, that's why this happened. See, <laughs> so it could be, you know, this metal. It could be that. But here, when something that act of God is because that's the way prophecies are, and that's the way. It, these prophecies were given to these men to speak about. You know? mm -hmm. And it'd be something if the great spirit has some cell phone and some uh, <laughs> telecommunications, you know, <laughs> it would be a lot different. But he sent something real down. Mm -hmm. Another two legged, another human being to speak to you this way, say like that. But so, yeah, it is probably, but never mind. Never mind that, you know, do your part of what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. and then you make your transformation. Say like that, be alone. Oh, you're speaking um, truth that crosses over actually, uh, many indigenous belief systems. And I, I, and I feel the time that I've been your student, that uh, uh, listening to one's own heart, that uh, there is, there is, uh, there's, there's the, nature in there there's there's a indigenous heart to hear um to those truths that you're speaking of and um to to follow that um a lot of folks look to the outside but you're speaking of something that is inside oneself when you when i when i hear you speak this way it uh, connects connects a lot of things together there was a, a, a david uh the mention here about to change the subject a bit but growing up with your grandparents that uh, uh, I think there's some folks who'd like to to understand what it's like to 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 be raised by their grandparents. Well, the first uh, the first question you have about the indigenous heart is uh, see a lot of you need to wake up because you you do have an indigenous heart. See, thank <laughs> you. You have that. Everybody mm -hmm. has an indigenous heart. You know, it's just that you have to feel it. Oh, we lost you. Oh, hold, hold on, David. We lost your, we lost your voice. Something happened. Thank you, Michelle. I wish I could see everybody out there. I'm sure a lot of friends and family watching now. You may have to um, sign off and sign back on, Michelle. Hmm. Yeah, we can't hear it. Can you hear us? Okay, good. Yeah, we can see you, but suddenly the, the voice went out. Just yeah, when David was saying not, something very healing. Yeah, you're not muted, but um, so I you may have to just um, exit and come back. Okay. Okay. While they're doing that, Steve, um, is there any way to know from, you know, as uh, one of the handful of us here in the webinar, first time I'm doing this, uh, to, to see who our attendees are? Um, yeah, the webinar is set, not set up that way, so it's not like a, like a meeting. Yeah, so it, it, it only features, you know, the, the faces of the people who are panelists, as they say. Then, yeah. Again, I want to, I want to thank uh, just everyone who's come and, and uh, will tell me later, you know, the, the, the friends and family. But uh, I, I hope we can get David back to, to continue that 
that point about the indigenous heart and to get it coursing again within us. And then these, these questions could actually be something answered uh, with the creation within that, that we're related to. At least that's how I find myself here. And uh, with brothers like Chris Jones here and, you know, uh, coming to David and, 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 and getting these teachings that are helping, helping to uh, align oneself. Right. I, I, I see, I see um, David coming in. Okay. Can you hear? We can hear, yes. We can't see you yet. Better? How is that? Yeah, we can hear you. We can't see you yet. We can hear you. No, the camera needs to be turned back on, I think. Is that better? There yeah. we go. Hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Let's continue. Please. So, yeah, so that the part I was saying about the healing, you have everybody has the indigenous heart, you know. You have an indigenous mind, you have that. Only thing you need to do is to wake it up. <laughs> you need to do that, you know, and accept it and believe it. See, like that. So that's you know, that's a uh, the question I turn. Uh, the second one is growing up with my grandparents, that's something else, you know, really. And uh, I, I, now that I'm this old and I sit here and I think back, that was the best part of my life because I don't know nothing about the politics, nothing about spiritual. I only know what grandpa talks to me about, you know, and what we do, see. My grandfather, my mother and my father they lived in a city, you know, and uh, there are several of us that were chose to stay with the grandparents, see? And I was one of them. That's why I could speak the language real good, the old language, you know? I could speak a very fluent Lakota language, all language, you know, Lakota. I so was raised by my grandparents until, until on the reservation, Right there on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation at Porcupine, you know, that's where uh, I stayed, you know. And, uh, and they all, only went through three years of schooling, see, three years. So when they are uh, going to enroll uh, me into the day school, and uh, I don't have a birth certificate. So they went to Pine Ridge and they took us over there and they looked at us and uh, they're trying to find out when we're born. And then they fix us a birth certificate down there. <laughs> See, so we use that to enroll and then, you know, like that. But I grew up with my grandparents. They live in log houses, you know, big log houses, big cook stove, uh, you know, they call it the reservoir, fill that up with water, cream cans with water. It's a dirt floor, you know, a nice packed in dirt floor, you know. Mm. And they have, we have ponies, we have horses, you know, because the, uh, before there was no fences that time on the reservation, no fence. So the wild horse run from uh, the Black Hills right through where we live, cut across into the badlands and made a circle back, then circle into the Black Hills. That's the uh, way, you know. So when they come, then we have some places where we could uh, corner them up and catch the colts and raise the colts. Because the big horses could kill you, <laughs> you know. Mm. They could charge you and bite you. But we, we use that. So that's how we have the horses, you know. But later on, uh, the Bureau of Indian Affairs came and said we only have, could have one or two horses for a person. And they took the rest, let's see. And I don't know why, but they took it, you know. And pretty soon the horses don't run no more. And, uh, you know, Cattlemen Association and the local ranchers, they put up barbed wire fences. See, they put up barbed wire fences. And then uh, pretty soon, they have some poison to give it to the black ferrets and the peri dogs and all this. So they could die so grass could grow and the black Angus and the cows could eat. See? 
Mm. Even though a lot of elk and deers died of that too, you know. Mm. And then pretty soon, uh, the superintendent, we all got sick, you know. We all got sick on the reservation. We all got sick of uh, tuberculosis. Right. See? And the superintendent of the BIA, Beer of Indian Affairs, came and told us not to drink that water. So long time ago, we drink from the creek water. That was good water. Mm. See? And they tested the water, and they said the water carries some kind of a disease brought by the cow. You see? And a lot of us, uh, uh, they shipped us, the uh, National Guard, the Army doctors came and helped us, you know. A lot of us. And that time, many of the grandpas and the grandmas went to the hospital, never came back. They died over there from this uh, pandemic tuberculosis, you know. Mm -hmm. But before, uh, due to all that, living with the grandparents, yeah, I, I learned a lot of things. My, grand, my grandparents uh, run the ceremonies of the Lakota ways, you know. They run the sweat lodges, they run the sun dances. A vision quest, many other, the turtle ceremony, or when a young woman, a young girl become a woman ceremony, and a, a boy become a young man ceremony. Many ceremonies like that. Why we go to the powwows, you know? Many things that I learned from my grandfather, so we still practice, you know? But not all my grandparents, uh, some of them, uh, uh, they're immune to the sickness and they survive, you know. So living with the, uh, the grandparents right there is really, really something else back in that day. You know? And back in the day, uh, the first time I ever, I ever encountered uh, a racial thing was in, my, in, in the school. Yeah. And in the school, when I first went to the school, I don't even speak English language. I don't even know what English language is. So to me, it, uh, I feel that I went into a strange world. What they're saying, I don't have no idea of what they're saying. You know? And then the first racial thing that I got from is my own Indian people. They call me the Big Indian, the big buck, you cannot speak English. <laughs> See? You can't. So, you know, I came back, I told my grandpa about that and told me not to worry, you know. Just keep going. So, and, uh, uh, many of us, we cannot speak English when we first went to school. <laughs> See? We don't know strange writing on this. What is this? That's how we are. <laughs> Gee, I want to have this, you know, and look at this magic stick that <laughs> lies on it, stuff like that, you know. So the first time we went to school, we have no idea on the reservation, you know, maybe outside the urban relatives do, but not us, see. But how I, I know how to read the stars, grandpa told me about the stars, you know. I know which one. I know the seasons. I know. I know when the uh, the birds flying back. It's uh, when it's fall. When it's autumn. I know how to say all the months in Lakota language. Name all the plants in Lakota language, mm -hmm. and the birds in Lakota language. <laughs> Guess what? Today, I'm a valuable man because I'm the one of the. There's only. 11 of us are here that could do this in the whole nation. <laughs> that we could name all this. <laughs> well, this, I want to ask you about, uh, there's a question going around about this, uh, you know, here we are at the Poetry Center, so much emphasis put on the written word, but uh, you're talking about uh, knowledge that is carried from human beings to human beings. and and it's an oral tradition. And a lot of these, uh, you know, white educational centers, you know, focus so heavily on, on, the, on writing. Um, but maybe uh, 
you can help us to understand the weight and the importance yeah. of the oral tradition, the, 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 yeah. the, the, the history that you carry. Yeah, because uh, why you have, why the Western educators and education, they have the written and have to document everything because they really lie to one another and they don't trust one another. <laughs> mm. See? It must be written in this book. That's the only way I'm going to believe it. See? That's the way. Uh, while we have all indigenous people, we have an oral history and oral education and everything because uh, lying is a crime in every tradition, every indigenous people's area. So if you go over there and you ask them, if somebody lie, what did they do? Huh? They banish them? Burn the tongue, don't speak, the tattoo their face, stuff like that. Then, then that shows that they're liars and nobody will not believe them. See? So lying is a crime in the indigenous nations. You cannot lie. You put your hand on the sacred item item and raise raise your hand and tell the truth. See? If you lie right there, you pay for the consequence. Something will happen. And the elder said, well, he lied. That's why that happened. See? So we have the oral tradition passed on from generation after generation after generation. See? Because the only language that uh, Wanti, Nopa, Yamani, Dopa, Zapta, Shakpe, Shakoi, Shagroha, Napchiuka, it goes on like that. That's the language that we know. And you know what that is? That's the numbers. <laughs> See? So we, we have, we trust one another. That is why we have the oral language here, you know? Oral language. We trust one another. And we believe but because grandpa never lied. And their grandfather never lied. Mm -hmm. If they lied, they would have been scarred in his face and that will carry through the generation, up to seven generations, you know, <laughs> like that. So today, today the Western educators, Western people like uh, the, uh, here, is, uh, your mind is really thin like a piece of paper here, you know. So, uh, uh, something that you learn, you might forget it. 50 years from now, 100 years from now, you might forget it, so you better write it down. See? Mm -hmm. And to prove it that they're telling the truth, so you have to write it down. See? Mm -hmm. Nobody believes you in the Western ways until, until they're saying, uh, well, Einstein said this. <laughs> See? Well, also Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull said this in our world, see? So uh, it, it's really uh, uh, the Western way of educating an individual is the requirements that you have to meet, see? You have guidelines and grading requirements, policies and regulations in order for you to acquire uh, the man-made education that walk and live on this planet everywhere, see? So, and they teach you uh, just to keep you in the hallways, like a hallway that light is over there. You cannot go beyond that because there's guarded walls right there for you not, you're not supposed to think what's in the other room. You're not supposed to, let's see. But Lakota, indigenous people, educationists, a circle around you, around. And if you want to learn, we will teach you how to. That's the way indigenous people are. Mm -hmm. Indigenous people of this Mother Earth. That's how they are. You want to learn. And if you make a mistake learning, they're not going to get mad at you or give you a uh, a flunking notice or anything, no? When you make a mistake in indigenous education, you're gonna make them laugh. They're all gonna laugh at you. <laughs> then you're gonna laugh and you're gonna learn from that, see? <laughs> so we, we never, 
if you make a mistake, we never punish nobody, see? By laughing, it warms you up inside and out, and you laugh too about your mistake, and then you'll learn from there. Okay, this is it. So it's uh, the way of teaching this uh, indigenous ways and the Western ways are way, way different. Mm -hmm. Pretty much different. Education belongs from the day that you breathe the air on this planet here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, having the, the chance to know you and, and, and having some of these teachings that help me to understand my Iranian, the, the, the indigenous part of the Persian heritage. And I would imagine all, all, all other peoples who come from somewhere whose ancestry comes from, from a root that to, to understand, as you said, that indigenous heart as it's, as it's pumping throughout all this humanity but uh, to, to, to be able to, to know you um, speaking this way in, encourages uh, me to, uh, to, to learn the, the indigenous language of, uh, of, of, of my heritage. Do you, um, do you your, your language, I mean, even with the one words that Mitakyo uh, is, is encompasses so much and then every, um, every word uh, of, of this indigenous language, it, um, it's very precious. It opens up doors to many things. Do you find it uh, difficult to, 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 to see it to, to continue, continue in your, in your grandchildren, the language? Oh, it is a little bit difficult, a little bit. I taught my, I always tell them in a story, my grandchildren, a story where the language exists. Mm. And then later on, I put them in their head, in their spirit, and let them be. Mm. So later on, they come back and they ask me, what does it mean? Remember what you tell me that? Then I pretended to forget. Mm. I pretend. So they will find it really hard. And when they find it hard, oh, I remember now. <laughs> then they won't forget that. See, it's always going to be inside of them. So I try, I try so much to uh, help, and uh, I really give uh, because indigenous people's language are spiritual language. Mm -hmm. They're all spiritual language, you know. I travel the world, you know, and I talk and I pray with and I eat with many, many different indigenous nations. And those are the ones that will know and their prophecies, those are the ones that holders of your ancestral language and ancestral beliefs and how things are in the roots, see? Mm -hmm. and that's what I'm talking about, when you have to go back and find them, you know? And you'll be amazed how warm, and it's just like you walk for miles and all of a sudden you have a nice cup of Ice cold water. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh -huh. For someone uh, like myself, born on this land, you know, this Turtle Island, um, and, and traveling the world and meeting uh, other indigenous peoples in other lands, but to come back to the one I was born on and feel this hands off from, you know, uh, the, the, the original peoples of this land. It took me almost 60 years to, 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 to understand my ancestral heritage through your ancestral heritage. This is a um, awakening and uh -huh. it, it, helps, it helps put things on a rail, up and out, you know. Just wanted to share that. Oh, because good, thank you. Yeah. I think a lot of us, you know, we, 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 that's, that's where it helps. What you're, what you're describing helps us to, to connect up, you know. Um, I, I, I'm trying to find some more questions here uh, from the audience out there. You know, uh, today is my anniversary. Um, uh, 32 years I've been married to, uh, oh, to Maggie. Congratulations. Thank you. It's must a, have a right honorable... I'm yeah. sorry? You got your soulmate. <laughs> yeah, resolution of the soul mm -hmm. there and here. And uh, she, she had um, posted a, a a poem by a Persian poet, Saadi, uh, 
listening to, to your teachings today reminded her of, a, of an old Persian poem that uh -huh. helps to connect, connect to, um, yeah. connect it, but I can't find it here. So hopefully she'll, oh, okay. she'll repost it. Um, Chris or Steve, any of the folks I can see here, you, you um, or, or, or David, any, any, anything else you'd like to share with us? It is good, I like to share that it is good if we could all come together in the body, mind, and spirit, which the Mother Earth is trying to get sick and help to prepare, not to start the war. We have enough wars. It's time that this planet needs to go back to its original form or else every one of us on this planet, we will see and pay, I would say that way, you know, like that. Because this planet is, Mother Earth is very important to all of us, all of us, you know. And how can something that's so important, important, important that how can you practice unruly, injustice hatred, everything among one another and then towards the earth also too, see? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I want to bring this up because you are in the university mm. and things start from the university today here in America, in Germany, in Europe, all over. It's the young people, their future, you know, they have to direct it, you know, they have to make it, you know, but uh, it needs to be done that way, you know, like that. Oh, hey, Trump. And now you have any more questions, any more, whatever you want to listen, uh, yeah. what would you have? Well, uh, yeah, that poem, that poem is for you, is reposted uh, by, uh, uh, by my other half, Yegandi. Oh, good. thank you. And there's a poem from the Persian poet Sadi. Uh, when you, you speak of Mitakra Lassen, uh -huh. uh, this comes to her mind. Human beings are members of a whole in creation of one essence and one soul. If one is afflicted with pain, other members uneasy will remain. Mm -hmm. And so what your people have, have been going through um, it, 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 there is an empathy that's growing, I think, I sense when, I, when, when we talk uh, of, 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 that, of that history of triumph and also tragedy um, that others are feeling. They're, they're feeling it too. And, um, and so, um, and, and the young people don't want to sit still. They want to act. They want to do something that will... Uh, will change change the situation now if if it's possible not to lie that's a that's a lot of hope that's great hope not to lie and, or, or steal and to instead um change something in the system so what i'm trying to i guess my final question to you david is um us here you know in the, at the university and these in these uh, systems you know um something's not right Something, so, something uh, is, is, is perpetuating itself and repeating itself. Um, that's, that's what we're, we're feeling and it's, it's, it's not right. We wanna correct it, but we're scared. We're afraid, there's fear, you know, because there's some security in, in, even inside of a bad system. So what I'm hearing from you is relax and, and have trust, trust, faith. Is that correct? Is that getting close? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to laugh, but I'm really, uh, I'm really glad that you people noticed and feel that. Yeah. I'm really glad you did, yeah. because it is true. Mm. And we've been trying to say that since, since this government was formed here, uh, something is wrong. It is wrong. Wrong to try to invade other man's sovereignty. It is wrong. 
It is wrong to say this land belongs to you. It is wrong. It never will belong to us. It never will belong to us, you know. Land is not ours. We belong to the land. <laughs> land don't belong to us, see? Now, it is wrong to make our brothers suffer. Mm. These are many of them I could say down the line, but these are the rules. Mm -hmm. The natural laws, the natural laws that written up there, it has been violated by every corporation on this land that has been formed and every government that has been formed on this land here. We are here to live in harmony and enjoy this earth, this mother earth, this heaven to here. But when they form these things, huh? It is everything is wrong. 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 See? David, uh, we have about five more minutes and someone asked a question. It's a good, this is a good question because it, it brings us around to, to um, I think, an answer in there, what you're saying. Uh, Zachary Wong asks, what is the meaning of Red Road? The meaning of the Red Road, uh, I, I believe you listened to the, my song on the Red Road, Shankuluta song. You know, the Red Road is the road of a, a spiritual, a person that changed, uh, uh, that reconnected, uh, uh, reborn itself and be free from all everything, from the prism that you walk, that you free from yourself and walk on your path, it's a red road. <laughs> so the, it's a red road, it's a road to the freedom. See, Chaku Luta. See? Is, is, is it easy? It all depends how you want it to be, you want it to be. You want to make it wide, you want to make it narrow, you want to make it difficult for yourself. Nobody cannot make it for you, you have to make it yourself. See, you have to. What do I want you to change to walk the red road? See, you need to. But I assure you and I guarantee you, the road of freedom to the connection to the other side is there and you could walk on it too. See? Mm -hmm. The road of God. See? You walk on it. You change yourself. Stop abusing yourself. Most important. Most important is you have to forgive yourself from abusing yourself from a lot of things. Only you know. I don't know. Not even the creator knows. You know what you did to yourself and others. See, you know, because they have given you everything that you need to be brilliant and wise. See? Mm -hmm. But if you ignore it, I'm really sorry that you did, you know. No. Well, if there aren't any more uh, questions coming in here or comments, I want to say on behalf of all of us, we want to see freedom for your people, for the for the Lakota, Nakota, Dakota nation, from the seven council fires, freedom from this U.S. government, to be to to be able to heal yourselves in your own traditional ways that are helping then to heal the rest of this world, this planet, all of us, is in deep deep gratitude and humility that um that 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 uh, I I I for one am. I'm uh, ready to sign up for that red road. <laughs> yep. You know, yes. um, that, and um, and I certainly uh, uh, expect a lot of laughing along the way. <laughs> There's been a lot of laughing, you know, uh, but um, I'm very grateful. We all are, you know, uh, David Swallow Jr. Well, we to Uha Mani. Oh. Um, and we hope to see you out here. You know, you, you were you were you were bound to come out here uh, well, a month ago. I will 
come over there as soon as I find a brand new pony. <laughs> <laughs> My pony is not uh, made to last that long, you know. Oh. So I have to get me a different pony, then I'll come along and see you guys out there, probably in April. Oh, can't, wa can't wait. Wopila, Lexi. Wopila. Yeah. Wopila, mm -hmm. Panka. Um, we, we hope to see you right here and um, try to make, make that pony happen. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and please uh, give uh, Nyla, help her, uh, our, our warmest regards and hope to see her too out here. Okay, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Steve. and everybody stand united. All right. I hope. Watch there. Take care. Hey, Hafez. Hey. 